Hello and welcome to this uh, video on using Affinity Photo 2's adjustments, adjustment layers and masks. Now Affinity Photo is a professional level photo editor, so it's packed with advanced tools and features. These are all very welcome, but they can sometimes get in the way of everyday editing decisions and adjustments, especially for users new to Affinity Photo or photo editing in general. Even if you're used to making adjustments in Photoshop, Photoshop Elements or other photo editors, Affinity Photo's way of working may leave you a little confused. So here's our guide to making everyday photo adjustments in Affinity Photo using the full power of its non-destructive editing workflow and then explaining how layer masks work along the way. All of this work is done in Affinity Photo's Photo Persona, which is where you find the bulk of its image editing tools. If you open a raw file, it will pass through the develop module first and then arrive here in the photo persona for any further editing. Now, our starting image of a beautiful lakeside scene just looks a little flat and bland, but this should be easy enough to fix with adjustment layers. First off though, you may have spotted four buttons on the top toolbar for auto levels, auto contrast, auto colors, and auto white balance. These act directly on the image layer, so it's much harder to backtrack and change what you've done. We won't use these. Instead, we'll use Affinity Photo's adjustment layers, which are created using the pop-up menu at the bottom of the layers panel on the right. Make sure you get the right button. There are others right alongside for creating masks, layer effects and live filters. We'll come back to masks shortly. The adjustments drop down is second from the left, and if you click it, you'll see a drop down list of available adjustments. Let's start with the curves adjustment, and if we select this, we'll see a pop up panel where we can change the curve shape. You can drag up and down on different sections of the curve, and here we've created a classic S shaped curve to boost the overall image contrast. With the curves panel open, you'll see there are some buttons across the top, so we'll explain these. If you think you might want to use that curve shape again in the future, you can click the Add Preset button. The Merge button applies the adjustment permanently to the image layer itself, so we don't want that right now. The Delete button gets rid of the adjustment layer altogether, which is handy if you realize you've chosen the wrong type. While the Reset button keeps the panel open, but resets your settings so that you can try a different approach. There is no OK button in these adjustment panels. Your changes are applied live as you work. And to get rid of the panel if it's in your way, you can click on a close gadget in the top corner or simply click anywhere else. The point is that you can apply as many adjustments as you like, so let's try another. It would be nice if the green colour of the water in the foreground was stronger, and we can do this with a vibrance adjustment layer, again selecting this option from the pop-up menu on the layers panel. Let's not hold back, we'll push the vibrance and saturation sliders right up to maximum. Now, this has made the water a very vivid green, but it's also pushed up the colour saturation way too far on the rest of the photo. What we need is some way of confining that saturation increase to just the areas where we want it, and that's what layer masks are for. To add a mask, select the adjustment layer you want to mask, then click the mask button at the bottom of the layers palette. You'll see a new mask icon added to the right of the adjustment layer, and if you click the small disclosure arrow to the left of the layer thumbnail, you'll see the mask separately, grouped with the layer it's applied to. Using masks is quite straightforward. By default, they are clear so that the adjustment applies across the whole image area. But if you paint over any area with black on the mask, that hides, or masks, the adjustment in that area. You can also use shades of grey to make the effect semi-transparent. What we can do here is select Affinity Photo's brush tool and adjust its properties in the top toolbar so that it's large and soft. This will make it easy to blend the adjustment in with the rest of the photo. Now, if we make sure the brush color is set to black using the foreground and background color swatches at the bottom left of the tools panel, we can simply paint over the areas we want to protect from that saturation adjustment. In this case, the steamship, the hills behind it, and the sky. The brush tool might seem like a crude option, but it's quick and effective. You can also use Affinity Photo's gradient tool to create a graduated mask effect, but this means getting involved in creating and editing gradients. So to keep things simple here, we'll stick to the brush tool. Over in the layers panel, you'll see that the adjustment layer has an icon for the layer itself 
and another to the right for the mask we've just added. To adjust the layer settings, simply click on the layer thumbnail. To edit the layer mask, click on the mask thumbnail. Just to reinforce this adjustment and masking process, let's create a third adjustment layer to see if we can make that stormy looking sky even more dramatic. This time, we'll use a simple brightness and contrast adjustment, reducing the brightness and increasing the contrast to make the sky look darker and more menacing. Of course, that's made the whole image look dark, so we need to create a mask for this layer too. We'll stick to the brush tool and the large soft brush settings we used before and make sure the brush color is still set to black and then paint over the areas we want to protect. In this case, it's the lower part of the picture and the steamship, the hills behind and the lower part of the sky too. The advantage of using a very soft brush setting is that you don't get any visible join where the adjusted sky meets the masked areas below. Very often the most successful and invisible masking techniques require very soft mask edges, not pixel perfect outlines. So now our photo is looking pretty good. It has nice punchy contrast, good colours and the stormy sky we were looking for. This has been achieved using three adjustment layers and all of these adjustments can be changed at any time simply by clicking on the layer thumbnail. That's the beauty of non-destructive editing. You can incidentally drag these adjustment layers up and down to change their order. Sometimes this has a visible effect on the image, sometimes not. It depends on the adjustments you've applied and whether the layers have masks or not. The simplest approach is to create new adjustment layers with your most needed adjustments first and build up a stack of adjustment layers as you tackle each of your photo's issues. You could call this a worst things first approach. It's obviously very useful to have all these non-destructive re-editable adjustments, but this does rely on saving your photo using the bespoke Affinity Photo file format. This happens automatically when you use the save or save as options. Affinity Photo will create a new image file alongside your original in its own file format. However, the Affinity Photo format won't be readable by any other software. So if you want to share your edited photo, you will need to export it as a regular JPEG or TIFF file. Affinity Photo does have a whole export persona given over to this, but that's probably going a bit too far for most users. Instead, use the File Export menu command and choose the file format and export settings there. Your exported image will have all your adjustments baked in for good, so if you want to change anything later, you'll need to go back to the Affinity Photo file, not the exported version. So that's a quick tour of Affinity Photo adjustments, how to combine them and how to use masks to choose the areas they apply to. We've only looked at three adjustments, but there are many more to explore. That's it. Thanks for watching and see you next time.